You are in France, which is a rich, stable country. Okay. Claim asylum here. Okay. Britain, full up. Any defense? Oh! Pardon? Uh, Pardon? Defense? Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to this special episode of Smile to Jannah. We've got Ali Dawa here because we're going to be talking a bit about immigration mate. And I'm going to deport some people. Well hopefully not, but we thought if we want to learn about immigration, yeah, yes. let's learn from someone who's got Britain's love and concern at heart. Yes. And now we want Britain to be first. Dominic Derry takes it again. Blake gets the silver. Now we don't want Britain to be second or third. Never. Who wants silver and bronze? Never. When you have gold. That's it. Like Paul Golding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Paul Golding is a legend, yeah? While you got people over here talking about geopolitics and let's analyze the historical context in which deportation and immigration and colonialization and imperialization. Paul Golding's like, forget that, mate. Let's go to Calais and let me go and have a word with these migrants who can't speak the language, who are probably scared that a large guy is approaching them. That's naughty. And he's having a word with them and saying, don't come to our country, mate. Yeah, so he's giving them reasons not to go. And saying, don't come to the UK. Okay, thank you. Okay then? All right. A great success. A lot of you people don't know that a lot of the borders that we have today have literally been drawn on by the British. Yeah, as you know, Britain has ruled 90% of the globe. Yeah, there's no difference of opinion with regards to that. Even now, the Queen is head of state of six countries. Of them, Jamaica, Canada, really? Australia, New Zealand. You guys need to Google Scramble for Africa, where European countries literally jumped on Africa and took certain bits. Belgium, you got France, you got the UK, you got all these countries that took a chunk of Africa and literally split certain tribes, certain countries when it was not an ethical thing to do. Yes. Like literally splitting families, splitting tribes and you've got some wars in Africa going on till today because of the maps that have been drawn. The second border uh, drawing was Sykes-Pico. This happened in the Middle East. A lot of Muslims don't know about this. Why are the Middle East people so angry and upset? Because borders have literally been drawn on using a ruler by Sykes and Pico who had never been to the Middle East, don't know the Arabic language. Why? Because they'd Take, taken it over. Mm. Forget everything that I said Ali, yeah? because we're going to see the gold medalist. Yeah. Dominic Derry takes it again! Yes. Yeah, Paul Golding. Gold yeah. They're saying don't come to the UK. Okay, <laughs> okay then? Alright. Sorry, I had to. Great That's really funny the way he just started. It. Just want to let you know, just please don't come to the UK. <laughs> I bet he was like, like, you've convinced me so much. I've trekked like 3,000 miles. Thank you for that. I'm actually going to go back. You're travelling halfway around the world to get to Britain when we're full up. Yeah? A great success! <laughs> What's that noise in the front? Yes. Did you do it? Yeah. This is argument. Britain's full. Please very, go very, back. Very convincing. You've travelled and he said, yeah, I was like, you're flipping sin with your own uh, mouth. I travelled half the flipping globe to come here and you're telling me, go back. We want to put our own people first. So we speak to people like you and say, don't come to Britain. A great success. <laughs> Bro, just look at their faces. Obviously, they don't understand the language in it properly. So it's like when you're here, like let's say you go to a foreign country, yeah, you go to France and the French, they're just speaking to you and you're just like, you don't know what you say. He, he tells them that he doesn't know English. Yeah. yeah. Now, if someone tells you they don't know English, you don't carry it. Yeah. yeah. But, but if it's Paul Golding, that's he wants to go with medals. Okay. Dominic Derry takes it again. We've got a housing crisis, a housing shortage, and you want to come to our country? Okay. Okay. But basically, 
Despite being told, he still rambles on and this guy politely is... <laughs> <laughs> At least you've signed them. The guy said he doesn't speak English. He's like, okay, I'll repeat it again. Things when he repeats it slower, it's, it's going to help the guy. This guy, yeah, this was my favourite bit. Legend. You are in France, which is a rich, stable country. Okay. Claim asylum here. Okay. Britain, full up. Oh! <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> this is another interesting point, yeah. This is right at the start. Listen to what Paul Golding said. I'm here with a team of Britain First activists. We've come over to Calais once again. Uh, we're standing right in the middle of what used to be the infamous jungle camp. Now, this is called the jungle camp. Yeah. Now, a lot of people disagree with the connotations of the jungle because jungle refers to uncivilized people. And if you look at the history of France, France has had a lot of colonial history, especially to do with Africans. Apparently, there was asbestos there. There was lack of clean water. Yeah, yeah I went there. Yeah, you went there as well. Yeah, I went there. I went there. We went with um, Human Relief Foundation. To help them, we saw it. Aki, it was, it's crazy, man. It like, was, really, was really it bad lack of uh, clean water and lack of toilet facilities? Yeah, it's very, very bad, man. Like, very bad. All right, now there's a standard line that's used by newspapers anytime immigration is mentioned. Here's what's said We don't want any more migrants coming to our country, taking our jobs, taking our homes, receiving benefits. We do not want that. Do you know what I mean? Um, my mum was immigrant, immigrant to this country. Yeah, she's come from Ireland. But UCL in 2013 mm. done a study of people from 1995 to 2011. Yeah. And they concluded that the migrants that have come to the UK have given 8.8 .8 billion to the UK industry on top of the benefits that they receive. See? Now that's a lot of benefit, but that will never get mentioned because it doesn't fit with the well political parties because immigration is an easy way for them yeah. to get votes. If you came to him, if you said to him, okay, give, give us some facts. Yeah, come, give me some facts of the statements that you're making. He wouldn't know. He would just say, no, you're just taking our jobs. That's all he knows. It's just a cliche word that's uh, been used. I believe these guys what they do is it's it's just all about money with them do you get what i'm trying to say so it's that's what it is that's why they go all the way to they're just to show look oh, we're doing some work do you get it that's why you get them like what well, it's so sad they'll just drive past these other hey quickly stop let's go hey hey uh, terrorism look look what we're doing see we're fighting terrorism okay get, get back in the car go to the pipe yeah go to the pub have a pint of lager yeah that's it and that's what it is do you get what i'm trying to say because if you think about it if you're seeing britain first what are you doing for britain do you really believe you going around and shouting and accusing a mass population that you all are terrorists. Do you think you're benefiting the, the, the UK? Are you putting Britain first? No, you're not. Look at a lot of Muslims or, or immigrants who come to this country and do so much more than you can ever do walking around or driving past mosques and just shouting a few banners and then jumping in and driving off. Do you think what kind of benefit does that give? Seriously, what kind of benefit are you giving to the UK? If you're going to name yourself Britain first, then put Britain first because that's what they want is they just want Muslims to have that reaction so they can. Yeah. Sure. So with with us, they know we're not going to come there and just have that reaction. We're not going to be. We don't need to be abusive with you. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Intellectually, because intellectually will be your funeral. Okay. Pa! Are you saying pow? What are you saying? Pa! Yeah, I mean, yeah. rather than speaking to these refugees, come to us. Yeah, we'll tell you about the UCL yeah, let's, study. Let's we'll talk. tell you about the sykes Pico yeah, Treaty. Yeah. We'll tell you about the Balfour Declaration. Yeah, but that will affect their agenda because that will really, really affect his agenda because he, he will know that we don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with Tommy Robinson going after these individuals who uh, commit, you know, you know, grooming gangs. Yeah. Well, the problem here is this. When you make it seem like it's only Muslims, when you make it seem like terrorism is only done by Muslims, that's where the problem comes in. We don't have a problem with you going look I, I don't have a problem joining you are you going to join me by going and finding the caucasians who are uh, involved in grooming gangs are we going to go to these terrorists who are caucasian individuals are you going to do that no so that's why this is our problem with tommy you know what's interesting yeah if we if we take J uh, jamaica and apparently the queen is the head of state of jamaica a lot of people yeah. don't know this yes but in jamaica akala was saying this apparently they're very homophobic yeah 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 i heard that yeah and he says that Although they're homophobic, no one ev ever blames the Christian religion. 
Although yeah, it's explicitly mentioned Bro. in their scriptures, no one ever says it's because of Christian scriptures yeah. that Jamaicans are homophobic. Yeah. Pablo Escobar was a Christian going man, standard, yeah? standard. and he was poisoning half of the world with his cocaine, yeah, yeah. and uh, killing innocent people. So apparently there were CIA links with Pablo Escobar as well. Yeah, what me surprised. But yeah, no, don't don't be researching useful things like this. Yeah. Just watch it on Netflix. Watch what you know, yeah. all that stuff that they yeah. put forward. Yeah. Watch all these. Yeah. TV yeah. programs yeah. don't worry about reading and yeah. actually yeah. learning about stuff I mean yeah. Yeah. that's not really fashionable exactly. is it yes. Yes. Paul Golding's three step solution number one talk to them in a language they don't know secondly gotta tell them it's full mate you gotta tell them it's full mate otherwise it's, they're, they're not gonna know it's a full house it's, I don't even stand that and number three <laughs> end with don't come, come mate so once you say to them it's full don't come and if they say to you, I don't understand, you repeat this point one, which is? Talk to them in a language they don't know. Yes. <laughs> if you go to another country, what are you known as? In the other country? A foreigner. Also known as? An immigrant. An immigrant? Yes, a refugee. You're actually not. Why are you? No. What are you? Expat. Okay. If a white person goes to another country, mm -hmm. you're not called an immigrant or a foreigner or a migrant, you're called an expat. You're not called an immigrant, migrant, foreigner, refugee because they're actually culturally biased and derogatory term. And an article from The Guardian will come up where you guys can read this further. It's like Nigel Farage, isn't it? Like, you know, it's funny someone who's interviewed him and then he was like, they don't speak our language. And he's like, where do you live? And they asked him, Nigel Farage. He's like, I live in France. Like, do you speak French? I was wondering why you spent more than 20 years living in Belgium and yet you don't speak a word of Flemish, German or French. How do you know that? that? You make people... Well, because this story about the wheels coming off your car came out that you don't speak French. Do you actually speak French? I speak a bit. Of, Flemish, I'll have you know, Richard, I am very good with the French wine list, all right? <laughs> That's so funny. Last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaurs. You know, I know my way around a menu. I'm very good with the French wine list, all right? That if you look on the borders, yeah, and you look at the countries that Britain has ruled, yeah, Commonwealth countries like New Zealand, Australia, you never see them on border control. If you go there today, we go there today and we look, the people that are waiting will not be Australian, New Zealand. Yeah, but other, con other members of the Commonwealth, African countries, and you've got Asian countries that were colonized by the UK, number one, their resources were taken. Number two, in, World War, in the World Wars, they assisted, like India actually gave two 2.2 million uh, people in World War II and then what happened so they assisted the UK fighting against the Queen's cousins literally were bombing this country and then yeah. Africans and Asians helped rebuild this country yeah. and now they want to come and seek refuge from wars that have been started from of, countries like this yes. and like and they're told exactly they're told sorry you're not welcome here mate but why is it that you never see New Zealand people, Australian people? Well, and terms used like expat, mm. expat, yeah, expat. What sort of hypocrisy at its finest? And then Paul Golding comes and he says, doesn't matter if in Afghanistan there's 25 years. America's longest war has been in Afghanistan for 25 years. Yeah, but and you would, we're taking your opium. We want to subdue the Chinese. We want to, you know, take your natural resources, mate. But no, why are you here? Why are you? Like, it's not a war. It's 25 years of business or the theft. That's it. Yeah. But Ali, the UK is full. Yes, don't come back. Don't think people understand that it's full, mate. Yes. Britain, full up. When we're full up. We'd love to meet Britain's first. Paul Golding, Jada. You don't understand how much I'm like, you know, I just can't wait. <laughs> it's a different experience. I am quite emotional right now, actually. Can I have a moment? All right, subscribe to my brother Ali Dawa, check out his videos, and uh, until next time, guys. Salam alaikum. Dominic takes it again.